Hello, I'm Alice Fern and I play Captain Beverly Bass, Annette and others in Come From Away. Hi, my name's Alan Berry. I'm the musical director for Come From Away in London. So we're going to be analysing and breaking down the big song for Beverly Bass in Come From Away, Me and the Sky. It is a storytelling song in which she describes pretty much her whole life in a synopsis um, leading up to the terror attacks on September the 11th in 2001. In the context of the show, we've just come out of a uh, screech, uh, it's a chaotic uh, pub scene where everyone's been screeched into gander and then we sort of hone in, into Beverly sitting, sitting on this uh, chair to begin her story. Um, so uh, that's where we're at right now. My parents must have thought they had a crazy kid Cause I was one of those kids Who always knew what I wanted They took me down to the airport To see all the planes depart And watching them fly Something inside of me was starting I was eight when I told them That I'd be a pilot But I was too young and too short And there were no female captains And my dad said be patient He said just see what happens but I took my first lesson, came down from the sky And told my father I'd fly for the rest of my life That first verse, what I always liked when um, I was auditioning for you, Alan, back in the mm. day, um, many years ago now, was the, uh, I was told, you know, to make sure, it, make it very conversational, make sure that it came across that I was telling a story, a life story, um, and it wasn't necessarily a song, even though it is. And I think how... I looked upon that and how I tried to create that um, for the team and myself was to make sure that you, you actually do lead into it with almost like a conversation, almost like a monologue uh, that just happens to be set to music. With that, I think if I were to think as a singer, you have to start cutting things off a bit shorter, um, maybe taking away a little bit of your vibrato here and there, so that really it feels like you're just singing it. You're, you're not really singing it, you're speaking it to a tune. So instead, uh, I could, for instance, go, my parents must have thought, you know, and start to sort of embellish it a little bit more. Whereas what we wanted to do is strip it back, make sure it feels like I just happen to be be speaking to someone and telling them my story. My parents must have thought, so it's actually much, much simpler. Do you agree mm. with that, darling? I do, absolutely. I think there's certain elements of the orchestration though as well and the way that uh, uh, the, the, the instruments that are used, we've got um, just a really simple guitar line, which doesn't get away with the storytelling at all. It's just very basic, sort of monotonous almost. And also, that, as Alice has just said, in terms of the simplicity of the melody, it's contained within an octave. Um, you know, there's nothing uh, embellished about it. It's just very simple. It just makes way for, you know, just clarity of storytelling. And I got my first job flying for a mortician in a tiny bonanza, just a corpse and me five dollars an hour. For flying dead bodies, I had to climb over their faces just to get to my seat. But suddenly the wheels lift off, the ground is falling backwards. I am suddenly alive. Suddenly I'm in the cockpit. Suddenly everything's changed. Suddenly I'm not too young or too short. And the passengers in the back don't complain Suddenly I'm flying company charters Suddenly everything's high Suddenly there's nothing in between me and the sky In this section I'm actually uh, sat down on the, the table and chairs Sitting down when you're singing a song is kind of okay if you're supporting the same way. Really what you don't want to do is like constrict your diaphragm and sort of like hunch over like that. That's when you start to really sort of notice that your breathing isn't the same and your support network isn't um, the same to support your voice. So as long as you're sort of sitting down and that is all sort of pulled up and okay, then you can sort of survive the seated version of this song. It is quite hard if you've got a really huge note at the end like that. But I mean, there is a, an aspect to singing something in and once it's kind of in there and in the voice and you know what you do there is so you've got really so much has to go wrong for you to get that wrong really um, because you ha can sort of do it almost half asleep to the point because your body is so used to controlling that um, 
But it is very different. You do have to make sure that you, uh, when you're learning it and when you're going from the beginning and when you're starting the run, that you've got all that and you're always thinking about all of that so that it becomes then second nature to your body. Um, and in terms of this section now, uh, for me, what starts to happen when you're telling a story as just a, a, a person, if you're telling someone else a story, what you tend to do is you start to animate it. You start to try and find a way that people will stay engaged in the story. Um, because, it, you know, a long story can get quite monotonous sometimes. And so you have to kind of keep making sure that everyone is really focusing in on you. Um, oh, this is really good. And you've got to make sure that you're keeping everyone's attention in the story. And that's my job as, as telling the story and also as the singer, making sure that everything that I'm telling is, is a new thought, but also, oh, you really want to hear this. And so you're keeping that audience in with this story, not only just because it's a lovely song, but because it's really important to hear every aspect of her life. If you don't, you lose a little bit of why, of what drives her. Um, you have to get from this song and from her whole show, really, but specifically from this show, from this song, you have to get how much aviation and flying means to her. Um, and so all of this that she's telling you about the animation, um, the the history of where it all started and what she felt when she first saw a plane, uh, what she felt when she first flew a plane is really important to um, show how she felt about that and animate that, um, because then you get the payoff at the end as an actress. Mm. Yeah, just to sort of lead on from that, the more sort of um, the music, musical sort of side of it as well. Um, the repetition of the word suddenly, I think it, it actually happens, you know, m you know, putting this point across. Um, there's, a, there's a real, uh, there's, it happens eight times in, in 20 bars. Um, so it just, it just keeps coming back, um, just to emphasise that. Um, uh, we also get sort of a change of harmony as well. So something sort of, you know, something's bubbling underneath, something's about to happen, the story's moving forward um, type thing. So uh, yeah, that's the kind of this, that's what happens in this section. American Airlines had the prettiest planes So I applied as a flight engineer But the World War II pilots, they all complained They said girls shouldn't be in the cockpit Hey lady, hey baby, hey Why don't you grab us a drink? And the flight attendants weren't my friends back then And they said, are you better than us, do you think? With this section, uh, it's like what I would suppose we call the second verse. Um, and we, she sort of disappears into her thoughts of what it was like when she was first training uh, to be a pilot. But I think what I love so much about the first line of that is that her thoughts of when she was flying, when she was learning to be a pilot were breathtaking, almost taking her breath away when she thought about the planes that she was getting to fly. Um, I suppose for me, it's getting that call from my agent and telling me that I've got a job. For her, it's getting there, looking up and going, I'm about to fly that. It's the same kind of quality. Uh, you will always find it in your life, whatever you want to do. It's that moment of going, and it, just your heart literally is in your mouth. It's, it almost takes your breath away. And that's very much what uh, that first line is for her. Um, and then she sort of disappears into remembering some of the slightly more negative parts, things that she had, the obstacles she had to cross. Um, and again, I think what you have to make sure is to not let it be too negative for her, and especially with this character, the characterization, is that it's not necessarily terrible they did that to her. She went, it's an obstacle and I'm going to fight it. Um, I'm looking forward to proving you all wrong. Uh, and so to try and find the slight humor in that and to sort of enjoy that she's going to win and she knows she wins that battle, I think is really interesting to play. I think it also, um, just to support the narrative um, of, of this little section as well, just the way that the music actually uses, um, it suddenly starts using nice sort of extensions of chords for those of you that are into music. So all of a sudden, American Airlines. We've got that sort of bright and really nice sort of warm feeling. Um, but then we sort of go over, over the page to the sort of the, the more sort of negative flight attendants and we get sort of quite spiky. Hey lady, hey baby, that sort of thing. So it's just that the way that the music sort of supports that narrative and that sort of story. But I kept getting hired in the World War II crew. They retired and the girls all thought much higher of me. 1986, the first female American captain in history. Suddenly I'm in the cockpit. <laughs> Suddenly I've got my wings. Suddenly all of those pilots protesting me. Well, they can get their own drinks. <laughs> Suddenly there's no one saying stay grounded. Looking down, passing them by. 
Suddenly there's nothing in between me and the sky. This next bit, as you can probably hear, it starts to get a little bit more dramatic. The music starts to build, the, the, the volume, the energy, um, and also the pitch of the song itself goes up. And that is, I think, to emphasize how, it's so many things really. Firstly, the story and what she's telling, it's getting, she's getting to the real crux of it now, where she achieved what she wanted to achieve. And so that has to marry with the voice. And the best songs I think in musical theater are the ones that do that. You don't have to really work hard to achieve. So the emotional, if it gets, in, if, it, if it raises an emotion, whatever that emotion is, the volume and what you have to do with your voice will match it. You don't really have to, work hard at that and this is what this song does for me naturally I don't have to try particularly hard to get the energy to get the emotion across it's almost doing it and helping me and wanting me to, and let me join in with it she's talking about when she achieved everything that she's ever dreamt of achieving and you get the big notes and the big riff at the top uh, absolutely the flight attendants join in on stage at this point come out of their chairs and come and join Beverly on stage uh, clapping and uh, maybe applauding that she you know become the first female pilot and joining with uh, backing vocals as well which is just simple it's a very simple chordal three-part harmony there's nothing extent no extensions or funky bits going on it's just this this lovely harmonic cushion um, just to really build the intensity and then we obviously uh, reach the the big note which is the climax of the song it's just this outpouring of joy um, which is very exciting each each night <laughs> crew the news caught and made headlines across the world suddenly it stopped no one's saying you can't or you won't or you know you're not anything because you're a girl so personally love this bit because the girls are behind me yeah <laughs> um they're doing some really fabulous choreography with a little hat for me with the girls backing me up, it sort of feels like a really empowering female moment. It was huge anyway, the fact that she was in charge of a plane for the first time and she was suddenly the captain. But, but to have a crew um, complete of females was really amazing. And as, as she says in the state, it made news. It was national press, which is just to me emphasizing just how important it was at the time. And to have everyone joining in in the way that they do, I think that really emphasizes just the time that we're in. I mean, we were in the 80s by this point it was a very very different world to what we're in now and I don't think we should ever forget how important it was and what a life sort of changing moment this was for women especially in this industry absolutely also to sort of help with this bit as well um, the uh, the band drops out um, totally it just there's nothing more exciting um, than you know just just uh, pure beautiful voices the piano then comes back in with this sort of ridiculous sort of riff down the piano I think it's just all, uh, just all sort of joyous and celebration. This this bit feels like, and the girls as well as they've been doing sort of oohs and ahs underneath beforehand. But they join in. No one's saying that you can't, you won't, you know. They kind of join in those specific words. It's just really quite a powerful, powerful moment when they suddenly suddenly join in with the actual lyrics as well. Suddenly I'm getting married, and we're putting pins on the map where we've flown. Suddenly I am a mother. And suddenly shocked at how much they've grown Suddenly I'm wondering how my parents would feel Seeing me teaching men to be pilots Cause suddenly I am a senior instructor And somehow I'm 51 Suddenly I'm flying Paris to Dallas Across the Atlantic and feeling calm When suddenly someone on air to air traffic says At 8.46 there's been a terrorist action And the one thing I loved more than anything was used as the bomb Obviously, um, leading up to the very end of the song now, she's racing through the rest of her life, quite literally. The most important thing of her life here is this, the fact that she became a pilot and what that meant to her. She then says the things that you know a lot of people go through. She gets married, she has kids. But it comes back to, and really importantly, it comes back to, I think, the moment that changed her life completely and the most forever, uh, which was the moment that the thing she loved, in a way more than anything, uh, was taking away for when she saw the Twin Towers be hit. To say, to call the things she loved, the airplanes, the bomb, is, is a dagger to the heart for her. And I think that's what's so amazing about the orchestration, the music of this, is that she says bomb and it's out. 
you know, it's like, it's a drop. We have to know that, that, her, that her life, her heart dropped out of her at that moment when she saw that, which is why I think it's so brilliantly written. Mm, absolutely. We get, we get um, this, this huge, bit, there's the sort of two builds and sort of, it quite, happens quite a lot in the show. We do sort of an eight bar section. Um, this sounds really clinical after what Alice just said, but it, it, it just all supports this. We get sort of a 12 bar section, then dynamically we drop again and we sort of, then we build again. It's these sort of like terraced dynamics that we get all the way through. And then we finally get to the word bomb. And I think the way that Alice del delivers it, it comes from left field every single night, doesn't it? We don't anticipate, we don't slow down before it. It just, we, we have a breath and there it is. And this huge B minor chord, which is a hugely um, dark key anyway, uh, just rings throughout the auditorium. And we kind of leave it as long as we dare, just to sort of, before we go into the final section. Suddenly, I'm in a hotel. Suddenly something has died Suddenly there's something in between Me and the So as you can hear, it's completely stripped back by the end of that song to emotionally connect with where she's at Everything that she believed in, she loved, feels like it's been taken from her in that moment. And you can strip the voice back quite a lot and not feel like you have to push anything. Quite often on some nights, I can't even say the word died. Like for instance, and it's something is died. And then it becomes very breathy. And, and when things like that happen, actually I embrace it because I think it only adds to the emotional aspect from my point of view, but also from the audience. Sometimes when you do speak, you do cut out. Um, from emotion and so I let that sort of it lands where it wants to land it's very different every night um, and we just have to make sure that we I leave the audience with and the audience are left with that feeling of she's lost she feels like she's lost everything that she ever believed in and ever loved um, which is really important to leave uh, actually in the show I actually answer a phone at the end and a snap straight out of it and go back into work um, and I don't even get to say the actual word sky at the end. We just actually keep going, which again adds that with the feeling of we don't want really any applause at that moment because it feels wrong to applaud what she's been singing about. We want to applaud and say she was fantastic and what she achieved. But actually where she's at at the end of that song, we don't. it doesn't feel right to have an applause. So moving straight on, answering the phone call and carrying on with the show is what I think adds even more to this piece. It does, absolutely. I think sort of selfishly as well, I think Alice was saying that it can be sort of different every night. I love the fact that it is all sort of stripped back and also I get to, I think me and Alice get to sort of like sort of feel each other across, across the stage. We don't, you know, I, she, can't, she can see me, but I just listen to her breath and, I, and we sort of, she makes a decision as to when she wants to sing. So it's quite a, quite a, it's a very intimate moment. It's really, it's really, really powerful and I say different every night. We deny them applause and she's and she gets on with her job. Um, incredible woman she is.